Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today I'm working on a set of Bose 301 Series 3, and the complaint was, sound suddenly stopped. Well, looking at the speakers here, we shine some light down in here, we see that the cone has separated from the voice coil. The voice coil stuck down in there, and if we get some real light on it, we take a look inside, we say that there's a little blob of copper down in there. So I'm thinking just quit working. It's not a valid thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is speaker number one of two. I've already got the spare drivers, so that's not a big deal. Uh, when this happens, you want to go down inside of here and you blow these woofers out. There are two things to check. Number one is you've got this resistor here uh, that's for your tweeter and that in turn is in series with that light bulb uh, the light bulb acts as a current limiter the resistor is just simply something to tone down the amount of high frequency uh, and then of course there's the giant capacitor there that takes the DC away so on rare occasions if that resistor is open or the light bulbs open the tweeters are probably dead but that hasn't happened here and I believe that most of the 301 series tweeters are interchangeable with the, some of the 501s and some of the 601s. Basically, whatever has this uh, triangular bracket thing here. And they wire these tweeters in series too. So if one goes out, oh, take them apart and ohm them out. Make sure that they, uh, they're both alive. I think they're both 8 ohm tweeters. So, yeah, that's uh, speaker number one. Let's uh, get speaker number two apart and see if it's equally as cooked. Here's the second one. As we can see, this one is almost completely frozen. It goes up but not down, so probably the same thing. Uh, also, these things ohm out at about 1.2 and 0 ohms, so there's definitely a probability that the amplifier is to blame and or they were just cranking them too loud and the amplifier died uh, so we'll need to have the customer bring that in and take a look at that too but uh, yeah let's get this one out and see what horrible ravages there are hang on let me turn this fan away here you're probably getting wind noise it's a little toasty here today in La Mesa it's about 92 degrees outside and air conditioning's nice and all, but then, you know, stale recirculated air, and the boogeyman will get you if you do. All right. And Bose is so nice about using wire wraps on their speakers, which I'm not thrilled about. Let's see now. So if you look down in there... Oh, this one didn't separate from the uh, voice coil former, but it's definitely uh, crunchomatic and limited movement. So, yeah, let's change that one out too, obviously. See how they tie that together? So it makes it really a pain. So what we'll do is we'll take a look here at the little resistor thingy. No breaks, no burns. Same with the... Uh, you can really smell a burning varnish inside of the cabinet. All right. So let me uh, swap this one out. and We'll do some frequency sweep tests. Okay. Looks good there. We're looking at one of the dead woofers. Oh yeah. Crispy. That is just crispy. Nice small fire there. Awesome. Alright, gonna look at that amp for sure now. 
here's the amplifier in question. This is a Nakamichi TA4. And helps to plug it in, I suppose. We're going to see if this thing's okay. Clicky. There we go. Let's see what this thing does. Comes out of protect. That's a good sign. I didn't find any shorted output transistors on it. And let's feed it a signal. Balance control's a little touchy. A little bit of a channel imbalance there. No loose connections anyway. I serviced this about maybe eight or nine years ago. And the person that owns this likes to play it loud. Well, let's see if cranking it will get any distortion. Nope, runs right up to the rails. Jeez. It's got to be about 100 watts. Something like that. Let's see how much it actually is. So 31 volts AC. That's about 115, 110, 115 watts per channel. That's just too much for those little Bose 301s. I mean, that's just going to murder them. That's why they died. They were cranking it. The voice coils couldn't take it. They melted into a little blob of copper, and the protection circuit probably caught it, preventing the death of the amplifier. Because nominally, this looks okay. It's got a little bit of a touchy balance control, but... Some deoxid will clean that up. So, yeah. So there you go. When you hear distortion, folks, turn it down. You're either going to kill your speakers or kill your amp or both. Thankfully, this thing survived. The speakers are nice and happy now, so the customer will be happy. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the little short snippet. More stuff to come.